message this morning comes from the gospel reading in Mark 9. Um, we're going to review just a uh, part of verse 35. He said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. This is our text. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm sure you've all uh, seen a movie or some such thing along the way where soldiers were in war. Uh, the, one of those very striking things that happens every now and then is a, a grenade gets thrown into the middle of a bunch of soldiers and somebody, uh, uh, almost without thinking, just jumps on the grenade. Uh, I don't know if it's like this for you, but for me, when I, when I watch that, uh, my uh, instinct about it is that, you know, I, would, I want to hold them back <laughs> because that's certain death, and, uh, and, and I don't like that. And so, you know, I'd like to save the hero, if you will. But then again, if he doesn't do that, then they all die, and that's much worse. But it doesn't matter how you put it, there's a sadness about such things. Uh, heroes are always kind of sad creatures anyway, but that's, that's very tough. Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm bringing this up because Jesus has, has talked to his disciples. It says that they, he started to talk to them about his coming death. Uh, I guess you could say he was about to jump on the grenade for all of us. Uh, he's talking about betrayed, crucified, uh, and, then, and then rising on the third day. Now, naturally, when your God is planning to die and he says that to you, uh, you, know, you, you sort of have to look at this without full context, uh, just try to think like one of his disciples at that moment. Uh, anyone would have a serious problem Sorting out, well, first of all, how, how God can die. I mean, I, I, none of us wants such a thing, but uh, imagine being one of those disciples sitting there, and Jesus says he's going to die. Uh, he's the Messiah, he's the Son of God, he's the Christ, he's the Savior. What do you mean, die? And, and, uh, and, you know, with all the stories he tells, they may well have taken that as some kind of a metaphor or a parable in any case. It, it would be unthinkable for most of them to suppose that he was going to die. And, uh, well, uh, you, you would think that him talking about rising from the death would be a comfort, but you first have to sort of accept the part about death. And if they can't even imagine how God could die, then they never even really get to the resurrection part. It just doesn't occur to them because, well, I mean, the only thing harder to believe than God dying is somebody getting up from dead. And, and so, you know, that's all very difficult. But aside from that, uh, being Lord, I mean, Lord is Lord. Uh, that's the top of the food chain, I guess you could say. Uh, so they figured... Instead, you know, they're talking about who, who's going to be sitting in the seats of power next to the God who lives and the God who takes power and the God who takes the Romans and throws them out of Jerusalem and, you know, and such things as that. So instead of them understanding or thinking even about the death of God, they're thinking about how they could seek out and take seats of power around him which is kind of human. Uh, the thing is, uh, you know, it, it kills me a little bit because when Jesus asked them what they were talking about, they didn't want to tell them. Because it is embarrassing for them to think about uh, that when, when Jesus is so opposite end of that, he's more concerned with humility and uh, service and that sort of thing. So, you know, calling out, I want the left seat and I want the right seat. And that, 
they knew that wasn't going to go well, so they were embarrassed about it and didn't want to tell him like he didn't know. And, and then on top of that, he, he, uh, there's a child there, or at least one, who knows how many. So, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you can imagine this, but guys that think that they're respectable uh, in a, an important conversation with the Savior, um, and they're a bunch of men, so uh, serious conversation looks like it's more important than it is probably. But here comes this child. Jesus grabs onto this child and s s sits in the, I, you know, I always picture him on his lap. <laughs> but he, he stands his child in the middle of these guys uh, as much as that is unwelcome for them and, and, uh, uh, and just adds to their, their discomfort. Now, you hear Jesus talk like this, and, and then maybe you uh, hear in the, in the back of all this, uh, follow me. You, you know he's asking, in all seriousness, to be the way you're supposed to be. Uh, uh, it, it, this is your Lord, this is the Son of the living God talking, uh, for you... He wants you to be sacrificial. He wants you to, uh, well, he wants you to think about how that connects to acts of service. Um, and, and neither of those happen to you without a pretty goodly measure of humility. Because, you know, who does service without humility? You don't have any reason to be servicing anything if you don't have some humility in you. And, and sacrifice is just that much more difficult. And how often, I mean, if you just think about life the way it is, how often as you wander through life do you meet a relative stranger with uh, the, the level of kindness and love that would be deserved from you? And, you know, it's going all the way to sacrifice for someone that isn't particularly nice. Uh, serving someone who is difficult, like having a crazy child in your in your midst, and, and it's even a, a little scary. I think if you're honest with yourself, it's a little scary to uh, to give up so much. I mean, he's talking about sacrifice, and he's serious about it. It's hard for all of us to give up stuff, to give up some money to a, a homeless person, or uh, give up. Um, a place to stay for the night somewhere, I, I, to give those things up, they're, they're, they're sacrificial things. Or just doing a kindness to somebody who's being snotty. That, that stuff is hard. It's hard enough just in the everyday things to do what is good and right, and that just is more difficult yet. And yet Jesus says, be sacrificial. Be humble. Be of service. The hesitation for that kind of thing is sort of obvious for all of us because it's difficult. Uh, it, it is interesting to me also that the, these disciples, and the twelve is among them, uh, these are the future leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and they did not understand what Jesus was talking about. They had no idea. What do you mean, die? What do you mean, rise from the dead? What do you mean we've got to pick up these children? It's all hard for them. They couldn't imagine how the Lord of hosts, who could be so terribly important, who could be the creator of all things, could talk about being killed. It's beyond comprehension, really. The rest of the world, even as we sit here, does not understand it. And, and being stumped on that, these same guys who are supposed to know stuff, uh, resurrection barely registered to, to them at all because they couldn't get past the killed part. And I guess it makes some sense that they'd have trouble with this since Lord would seem to be Lord. If you're going to call him that, that kind of has meaning. That uh, means he's in charge. That he is in power, has power, that he's the greatest, 
I don't think any of us would argue about that. It's true enough. But what does that mean in this world here? That Jesus was here. That he's the son of God and he was here. And he's talking about dying. What does someone in charge of children do, you might say? Because, you know, he, Jesus brings it up. It's supposed to be, uh, 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 what would you say, a, a, a manner of explaining the circumstances of how the, the children of God are supposed to be. So he drops a child in the middle of that. So how, you know, you've all probably had some part of looking after a child, even if it's just for a short little time. Well, so what do you do when you're taking care of a child, if that's your responsibility? Well, the answer to that is uh, whatever is needed. Not, not what is wanted, mind you, because kids can be very erratic about that. But whatever is needed by the child, that's what you do. Well, you know, and it's as simple as that, but how hard is that? Uh, for, for those that have been parents, it often means... A, a great deal of humility before the difficulty of taking care of a child because it's hard. Uh, th then it means uh, trying very hard if you take it seriously in love to serve that purpose. And, and it changes from day to day because needs do. And, and often this happens with deep sacrifice of time and sleep and resources and patience and prayers and all the rest of the things that go with looking after a child, even if it's for five minutes. You know, if you look at a family, the, the lordship of the thing is in the parents. I guess that's true enough. But it plays out not so much in being in charge, but being in sacrifice. That's what parents have to do. It, now, now, with all that in mind, consider uh, what happens with the Lord of all things. What sacrifice, what service would be needed to protect everything that he has made, everything that he loves, everything that he cares about, and, and not only now, but in all of time, every single person that's ever existed and everybody that has yet to come. He has to take care of all of that because he's the Lord of all. So how does that go? But if you start comparing it to being a parent, which you should, you, now you might maybe be able to follow along his words, his path, even in this a little bit of a thing in this gospel reading today. He was, he says, to be delivered into the hands of men. Uh, read that delivered to be betrayed. Uh, remember, it's God here that we're talking about. That's, that's who this is. This is the Son of God here. He is to be delivered into the hands of men. Now how, again, do you picture God in the hands of men, betrayed? It's hard. He was crucified, and he died there. God did that. There's an a interesting little passage among all of the writings of Lutherans in the past, uh, in the 16th century, if you want to go back that far, saying in as much as Jesus is God, God died. It's impossible to comprehend for these disciples, and it's hard enough for us, because God did that. Then uh, all of this, you understand, is for forgiveness. It's to do the saving that he knows that you need. That's why he did all that. And then after that even, he fights death itself, which is the last enemy, the big horror of all of us, because death is where we all go. To, to, he, he goes and uh, he takes that on just because we who sin have caused death to exist. And we can't beat it down. So he does that. A sacrifice. He served. Under, under, all the way to suffering. This is God talking here. To death. To battle death. To victory. 
And God did all of that only and finally for you. This is forgiveness. This is promise of resurrection. This is all that God would do to care for you. And uh, after he accomplishes all these things, he gives all of it, every benefit that's attached to what he has done to you. All for you. Always was. From beginning to end, always was for you. Not just for them in that time. Not just all the way back to Adam where sin began. And not just the people at the end, but even for you here and now. Your Jesus did that. When, when Jesus talks about being greatest, he's not naturally talking about himself, although certainly that's what we think. But look at what the, what the greatness has to do. He, he has to be last of all and servant of all. Do you want that job? Because that's, that's what he says the greatness does. But if you want to be greatest, that's what it is. Even still, as much as you're unable to take that kind of work in and of yourself, that's what Jesus did for you. The Lord of hosts, creator of all things, died for you, gave up all for you, and lives for you. All of that for you. He went through all of that as the greatest, to be the servant of all, to be the least of all, to save you. And, and you know, here we are still saved people. I guess if he wanted to, he could take us home right now and everything would be great. But he hasn't done that. You're still here. Which implies that you have purpose. And he's left you to be the greatest in this world. With the authority to forgive sins because of his blood. With the authority to tell people that they could live forever if they only believe. The authority of the Holy Spirit inside you to be the ambassadors of reconciliation in this world to bring people to God in peace. You have your purpose. You actually are like little Jesus is wandering around. So all of that that he has done for you, you are now doing for the people that you live with. It's actually incredibly difficult to sacrifice and service and humility. It's kind of antithetical to humanity but here we are with the Spirit of God in us so that we can take these things on, not confident in ourselves, but forgiven in Christ and lifted up in Christ and promised things in Christ, we can go into the world and be his children. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.